Hey guys, my name is Brodysons, and I'm here to tell you that going interplanetary in Kerbal Space Program is not hard. Why am I getting such low FPS? That's not good. Oh well. What is going on here? I don't know. Anyways, let's just talk about what you need to get to interplanetary space. You can't just go there with a crappy rocket. You need to know what the parts do. So, we're going to load this auto-saved ship that I have, which I remember correctly is called Doing a Happy Face. Yes. And this is it. It may not look like much, but it does actually get to Duna. And the way it does is with asparagus staging. Asparagus staging is when you drop off some of the parts rather than all of them at the same time. Now you may be wondering why is this better than normal? Well, when these run out of fuel, these actually weigh something. It, I mean, it, you can't just have fuel inside a massless container. It's impossible. What you have to do is make sure that you drop off the mass so that you still retain all the thrust, but you don't have as much mass on you. In fact, you also get rid of the bottom rockets that also add to that. So, in essence, you're... In fact, it, it almost, it adds up the amount. It adds up to almost double the delta V out of your bottom stage. In fact, I can actually get this thing to a Duna encounter with this middle rocket, which fires from the very beginning. It may be difficult with the 9 frames per second I'm getting, but I can get it. So, let's take this on the launch pad and fly to another planet. Throttled up, SAS on, and launch. You'll notice over here that these two are draining more rapidly than the rest of them, and these two are draining more rapidly than these three. And you'll see that these two will drop off before the rest of them so I get more thrust for the same amount of fuel. And there's those two gone. And now you'll see these two draining a lot more rapidly than these three. And all in all, it just makes for a very, very efficient launch profile. In fact, the most efficient launch profile for this specific rocket I've found for, through experience is starting the gravity turn at 15 kilometers up. So that 
is what we'll do. You'll notice some spin, but that's just some spin. It's not all that bad. It's because these two are draining faster than the others, and it's kind of offsetting it a little bit. It's still spinning. Because at this point, it's only symmetrical along these two axes. Now we drop those, and it'll stop spinning. And we can start to bring it along the 90 degree mark, which is this one. So I'll bring up my little bit thing there, and we'll watch as this thing expands. Crap. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, I was pressing the wrong buttons. That is why. get that back onto a 90 degree plane. Alright, I'll stop using these things now. And you'll see that I've still got a lot of st fuel up in these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to reach a prograde marker. And then I will normal time accelerate. And oh crap. And because we're still using main cells, we get a lot of thrust. And it will be easy to circularize this orbit. Once I get it back onto 90 degrees, now. So we'll decouple these two sides, and the rocket will automatically do that. I also want to bring my apoapsis right behind us, or preferably in front of us. Okay, now is the bit that you have to actually know your stuff for. The phase angle of Duna from Kerbin is 44.9 degrees, so it's essentially 45 degrees. And the way you measure degrees is relevant to Kerbal, which is the sun. So you look at Kerbal and Kerbin as if they were on a line right next to each other, which of course they are, but when you look at it like this, and Duna has to be there, so it makes this 45 degree angle from relative to Kerbal from Kerbin to Duna. That's something I didn't know before I learned how to go interplanetary. The phase angle for Joule is 33, or excuse me, 90 something, 93 degrees, 96 degrees. 
I don't know. I'm gonna go there eventually. Anyway, so there and there. Needed to be about there. So we have to go to the space center and go to our space plane hangar and just get out some sort of vehicle. I guess the behemoth, which is my Skylon space plane. Yeah, sure, I'll just do a kind of a review there as well. So this is a double feature. Alright, so we're going to put on the brakes, head to the map view, and zoom all the way out. So it'll take us uh, not too long to reach there. Of course, it's going to be maybe a year or two for the cur little Kerbals and for our Skylon space plane. Oh, I gr definitely overestimated that. It'll be less than a year for these guys. I'm I'm sick by the way if you couldn't tell. We passed 180 degrees and we're coming up on around 100 right now. No, that's not true. 150 right now. Right now we're at about... Mm, 110. Definitely nearing 90. Which is just a right edge. Right angle. And that is 90 degrees. I don't have a protractor, I'm just estimating, but 90 and 45 are really easy to see, and 180. So we're around 80 degrees. We just passed a year for the little Kerbals. So I was wrong about that. Around 70 degrees, maybe 60 or 50, and we are, now we are at it. So let's head here and just give a little test flight to this because I really want to. Take off the brakes, space bar. This thing actually works, surprisingly. I don't know how I got it to, but I did. I imagine it's probably because it has the wings, um, the wingspan of the friggin' runway, but... Yes, it's fun. I can get this thing up to about 10 kilometers, and I really should have put ram intakes on the end of these. So I could bring it up to 20. But, oh well, what you gonna do? Oh, and by the way, HOC Gaming, if you see this, this is my Skyline Craft. I made improvements to it. I submitted it to you for a test pilot. Um, basically, I scrapped the whole Albatross 3 Skylon plane design because... 
the only way to actually get them to connect was to land the Albatross 3 over there on that runway. And I couldn't do it. Because I'm terrible with planes. So I just made one connected to the actual shuttle slash behemoth I have here. And I just kept adding more of these things until it flew. Because I'm terrible with planes. Okay, time to cut the engines and decouple. And just fly this for a while. This thing flies really well, and I don't know why, because I designed it. I'm not trying to land this on the run. I only ever pulled that off once, and it was lucky at that. And that is someone outside my house. I'm actually recording this in the daytime, which is unusual, because usually I don't have my daytimes free. Oh, it's broken. Oh well. Let's go to the tracking station and head to our...
space thing, which just happens to be in the right position to do our Oh, it's not really in the right position anymore. You know what? It's fine. can get this to be at a retrograde right now, and then it'll be prograde right here, which is where we need to be. And we can just stop by doing On the opposite side of curb, um, curbin from the sun is where we need to be to burn. Let's just put a maneuver there. Little quick to add maneuver. Zoom out really far. Set Duna as our target by left clicking. deal with multiple maneuvers. There's our close encounter. We should bring this as close as possible. And... Uh, I only have a minute to plan this. How close is that? Close enough. Get on the mark ship. Do we have that much fuel in this? Yeah, we do. We've got half of this fuel tank left in this little fuel tank here. We've got 2,000 fuel, which for Rocco Max should be oops, enough for that much thrust. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, burn.
Dang, I had more fuel in here than I thought. Right now, I'm just planning the last bit. We can bring this. No. I want to bring this closest approach as close as possible. There's our Duna periapsis. It's pretty high periapsis. I'm not gonna lie. But it's good enough for now. And now we can just time accelerate to our... Oh, that only requires 37 meters per second. I really should ditch this stage. Four, three, two, one. Thirty, twenty-nine, twenty-eight, twenty-seven, twenty-six, twenty-five, thirty, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, you know, I'll just do it now. Because right now, we are at a point that is so ridiculously close to it in relative to the sun that it doesn't even make a joke. It's not even funny if you didn't get that. Come on. Just do that and start. Oh, crap. And stop. There, it looks like we actually have a periapsis now. Yeah, we do. Do 
Duna encounter, our periapsis is 23 million meters. So, I want to say 23 kilometers? No, no, 230. Twenty-three thousand kilometers. That's it. All right. So we'll ditch this stage. And we've got our LVM atomic rocket motor, and we have a lot more magical torque, and it's way easier to control. You'll notice on my lander that we have a drogue chute and multiple side-mounted parachutes. That is to be cool, because everyone wants to be cool. Okay, right now would be the most efficient time to start changing our position or our periapsis to Duna. I want to bring that to around 300,000 meters. It's a very good number. Okay, burning that way brings it up. So basically, if it goes up a little, I want to go the other way and make it go down. And I just want to keep doing that in all the different directions. We have a pro-normal, pro-radian, stuff like that. Right now we're going retro-radian. Pro-grade, retro-grade, etc. I just use the tiniest amounts of fuel. Oh, it's starting to go up again, so it's time to change the direction. We've gotten all the awesome we can out of that. So we'll go at 180 degrees. Just because why not? That is bringing it down very slightly. But every 100,000 counts. left out yeah okay so we'll go retrograde see if that brings it up or down it does bring it down good oh let's bring it up again Right, let's go over here then. No. Nope. Alright, it looks like we're, we've gotten it as low as we possibly can. So what we're going to do is we're going to time warp closer to it. And then just retrograde it when we're in its sphere of influence. <sighs> this may take a while. That is a fairly low periapsis. I mean, Duna will be pretty visible. We've used 
three units of fuel of our 1080. It is awesome. Do I have any solar panels? Yes, but they don't need to be extended. Forgot about that. Ooh, that probably didn't sound too good on the mic, but oh well. Do we have visible yet? If it was, it would only be a speck, but still. Are we an orbital camera? That where is doing a relative to us? That way. Oh, and down quite a bit. So looking at Kerbal, oh there's Duna right there, look at that. Alright, let's see what happens if I add a maneuver. I would take 314 meters per second of delta V. I don't want to risk it. I'm going to speed up the burning process here because it will probably take a while. orbit is pretty close to polar so I can probably get one of my probes into a polar orbit seems like a good altitude All right where is the marker that shows me where my maneuver will be. It's over there. minutes three two one forty eight seconds left yeah it'll be a ten minute burn so I'll definitely speed this up it should only be two minutes fifty for you guys but we're around there but 
No, it'll be 2 minutes 50 for me because I'll speed up with physical time warp. And it'll be even less for you guys because, yeah. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Okay, I'm back. We have just done some stuff and some planning to get us in a polar orbit around Duna. So, without further ado, let's go a bit faster, please. Faster, please. Faster, please. Faster, please. There we go. Starting to get a little bit of speed. Just a little bit. 50 meters per second. Come on. A little bit faster. So, what we're doing now is adjusting our orbit to be polar, and then we'll reach our periaps to do our second maneuver, which will be burning retrograde like a boss, and then stuff will happen. Okay, so I really want to bring my thrust down, and I want to follow this maneuver thingy. And then stop. Now we look for my maneuver node on this. Where are you? Over here, I presume. There you are. Now only all we have excuse me, all we have is the retrograde maneuver which will take two hundred and fifteen meters per second of delta V. Two hundred and sixteen meters per second of delta V. Come on. And we'll just warp ahead to the periapsis. Burden. 
quickly burn. Cut the throttle way down and follow that node. Alright, that is actually good enough, so we'll cut out the maneuver node and release the probe. So we do that from decoupling this stack separator. We'll switch over to sh this ship. Toggle the communicatrons. Should have set up an action group for these. But you'll notice that this thing is in a similar style to the Voyager probe. I didn't intend that until I made it, but yeah, I like it. So we'll switch back to this ship, and we look at Duna, the red planet. So what I want to do is I want to set up a maneuver right here. Actually, no, I don't. I want to land on the poles. So we're going to land at the vertex of all the polygons on Duna. That looks about right. I'm actually going to deploy my other probe because I don't really have a use for it. It just adds a mass that we have to push. And hey, who knows, maybe these things will pick up transmissions and or will be picked up by the aliens that are somewhere within the Kerbal system and will finally find them. Hey, what happened to my maneuver node? Oh, duh. It's gone. Brilliant. Okay, let's just add it again. Retrograde. On the pole. I think that's even closer to the pole than the last one. Yeah, that's a little bit closer. I can get it just a bit closer by grabbing the prograde marker and pushing down. Yeah, that's perfect. I want that. 
So, let's find the blue maneuver node. There it is, up there. E to stop the rotation. Oh, overdid it, overdid it, overdid it. I think it just smacked that thing. Sent it flying. And SAS. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, up here. Sorry again, probably sounded disgusting. Alright, node in 20 minutes. 15 minutes. 10 minutes, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Slow that down. Three, two, one. Nine, eight. Burn. All right, let's just accelerate time a bit. That's what I love about these low power engines. You can get finite, finite detail. Or not finite, oops. Fine, fine detail. Thank you, you have done your job. You can go by now. Warp ahead. The Anus of Duna.
three parachutes you can deploy now. Okay. Right. That just exploded. And or that will explode. Well, Jack and Calbear seem happy with the mission. Here we go, we're slowing down. Please don't explode when you touch down. Oh, that exploded. We're moving at 12 meters per second, which is a bit fast, and I don't want to explode. No! No! Why you explode? I should have burnt sooner. I really should have. I need to stop sending people down here. Oh well, well that's how you go interplanetary. Thank you for watching.